Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will be learning about inverse functions. Let's start with something very easy, like how to find the inverse values when you are given a table. So here we have this table. Let's say that we'll call this table f of x, and then we'll create a new table for the inverse of f of x. On the left side, I'm going to put my x values, and then on the right side, I'm going to put my y values for my inverse which I can also put the inverse of f of x, and I can also say here f of x. Doing a table is going to be very simple. We're going to switch all our x values to be y values and all of y values to be x values. We can do it point by point. The first one, we have x equals negative 2, y equals negative 7. When I do the inverse, I'm going to swap them or switch them, so it's going to become negative 7 negative 2. Looking at my second point, I have negative 1, negative 4. When I switch them, it's going to become negative 4, negative 1. For the next one, I have 0, comma, negative 1. So when I switch them, it's going to become negative 1, and 0. Next one, I have 1, 2. It's going to become 2, 1. And for the last one, I have 2, 5. It's going to become 5, 2. Again, super easy. If we want to evaluate things with the table, which we have done before, you can do it. So for example, if, if I say f of 2, I want to figure out what my y value is on equation f when x is equal to 2. So for that, I have to look at the last order pair. And I know that when x is 2 and f, my y value is 5. If I, they ask you to find uh, f inverse of negative 4, for example. Again, when my x value is negative 4 in my inverse of f table, my y value is going to be equal to negative 1. Nothing complicated, super easy. Now, let's look at how to find the inverse algebraically. So when you do it algebraically, your x and your y values are going to be swapped. So if you switch your x values to y values and your y values to x values, the domain is also going to be swapped with the range. So when you do that, the domain will become the range and the range will become the domain. Make sure you write down these five steps on how to solve uh, for an inverse function algebraically or with an equation. Step number one, you're going to replace f of x with y or h of x or g of x, whatever letter you have. Step two, you're going to inter exchange x and y. If you have multiple x's, please make sure you uh, switch them to become y's. Step number three is going to be the longest and different for all of them, but you will always need to solve for y. After you solve for y, you do step four, which is replace y with f inverse of x or whatever letter you have. And then step five, which is very important, is to state any restrictions on your domain. Let's look at the parent function y equals x squared. We have a table here. So you can actually do this with graphs as well. So as you can see, we have the point 0, 0, which is graph. If we swap them, I'm going to create a new table on this side with x and f inverse, just so we can have an idea of what the table would look like. So it's still going to be at 0, 0. It's still going to be at 1, 1. The next one is going to be 2, 4. And my last one is going to be 3, 9. So I'm going to color code it. I'm going to do it in red. So again, 0, 0 is still there. 1, 1 is here. 2, 4 is up here. And the next one is already too big. Uh, and I, it doesn't fit in my graph, but I can graph these three points that I have. And I know my graph is going to look something similar to that. Something very important, your line of reflection is going to be y equals x, which I'm going to draw here. And as you can see, this graph is going to be reflected across this line, which will give you this graph. Looking at the restrictions for this one, uh, if I were to do it algebraically, I'm going to do y equals square root of x. That's my step number one. 
Again, I'm going to switch my f of x to y. Step number two, I'm going to switch them. So x equals the square root of y. And then step three, I'm going to solve for y. So I'm just going to rewrite it very quickly. I have to square both sides, so then I get y equals x squared. Um, step number four, I'm going to replace y with f inverse of x, which will give me x squared. And then here, step five is very important because we need to look at the domain of the original and the range and then swap them. So I'm going to erase just so it can be easier to see. So my domain is going to start at zero, go all the way to infinity. You can see here, zero is used the smallest x value and then it goes all the way to infinity. My range is also going to be from zero because this is the smallest y value and then it goes up all the way to infinity. So I know my inverse needs to have the same domain and the same range. But if we were to graph the equation y equals x squared, it would look something like that. That's why uh, restricting the domain is very important because I want my graph to be this one, but I only want my domain to start at zero all the way to infinity. If we look at this graph, it actually goes from negative infinity to positive infinity on my domain, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that true. And my graph will look something like that. So basically it will be half of a parabola. And then I'm, my restriction would be x has to be greater than or equal to zero or the right side of my parabola. Now we can see the reflection would work at this time, but it didn't before with the whole parabola. So these two things together will form my answer. So let's look at another example. Let's see if we can figure it out. So now we have the function f of x equals the square root of x plus 2. And now I'm looking for the inverse. I'm going to do it algebraically first, and then we will look at the graph to see if we have any restrictions. So again, step number one, y equals square root of x plus 2. As you get more experience with this, you can actually combine number one and number two later on. But for now, I'm going to continue doing them separately. So again, step number two, I'm going to switch my x's to y's, my y's to x's. Step number three, I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to rewrite it. First step of solving, I have to square both sides. So then I'm left with x squared equals y plus 2. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So my answer is going to be y equals x squared minus 2. Step 4, I'm going to replace y with f inverse of x. And then for step 5, remember we have to look at the equation of the original. Or original or f of x. So I'm going to do it in purple. That way I remember that that's my original equation. If I have the square root of x plus 2 with, parent, with the plus 2 inside, I, I can use transformations and I know my equation will just be like the square root parent function, but shift it to the left two units. So it's going to look something like that. So I know my original will have a domain from negative 2 to infinity and a range from 0 to infinity. So now looking at my inverse, I wanted to have a domain from 0 to infinity and a range from negative 2 to infinity because remember these two things are going to be swapped. So I'm going to change back to blue and look at my actual equation. So this one's going to be a parabola shifted two units down. And then again, I want my domain to start at zero all the way to infinity and my range from negative two all the way to infinity. 
I can see my range is fine. I don't have any problems with it, but my domain is not. Again, the domain of the blue graph is negative infinity to positive infinity, but I only want it from zero all the way to infinity. So that will be my restriction. X has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then these two things combined make my answer. Let's look at an example with a rational function because these are going to be the ones that are kind of weird because they're different. The steps don't change. It will still be step one, y equals 3x plus 2 over... I'm going to change it to x plus 4 just because I'm used to the x is being written first, but it doesn't matter because I'm adding the order could be switched. Step two, I'm going to do x equals 3y plus 2. So change this x to y. Change the bottom x to y as well. So I'm going to get y plus 4. Step three, I'm going to rewrite it. So x equals 3y plus 2 over y plus 4. I cannot solve for y when y is in the denominator. So I need to bring it back up to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 4. This will divide out to 1. After you do that, this step you're always going to do, and you're going to distribute the x to both the y and the plus 4, leaving me xy plus 4x equals 3y plus 2. After you get to this step, the only way that you can combine your y's into 1, so you can solve for a single y, is to factor. In order for you to be able to factor, you have to put them on the same side. So everything that has a y is going to be on the left side. Everything that doesn't have a y is going to be on the right side. So I'm going to move this 4x to this side. There's two things I need to move. I will do them one at a time so that way you all don't get confused. After that, again, everything that has a y needs to be on this side. So this is good. And then this one needs to be moved to the left side. So I'm going to subtract 3y. After I do that, I recognize that these two are not like terms, so I cannot combine them. So I'm just going to write them next to each other. So I'm going to do xy minus 3y equals negative 4x plus 2. On this step, I have to factor a y as I said before. So when you factor out a y, imagine that you're dividing everything by y by bringing it to the front. So then xy divided by y will give me just x, and then negative 3y divided by y will just give me negative 3. After I do that, I have negative 4x plus 2, and then I just have to divide by x minus 3. So step number 4, I'm going to write f inverse of x is equal to negative 4x plus 2 over x minus 3. There's two different ways that I can do my restriction. I can look at the range of the original function and know that I have a horizontal asymptote for this equation. At x, I'm sorry, at y equals 3. So my um, range for this equation is going to be all real numbers except y equals 3. So when I flip them, my range will become my domain on the other one. So it will be all real numbers except x cannot be equal to 3. Again, these two things combined make up my inverse function. Hopefully you learned something new. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.